Great. And you mentioned omega threes versus omega sixes. What does avoiding omega sixes look like in your in, in someone's diet? Like, what, what should they avoid eating? So uh, the pro-inflammatory omega sixes, I would say, um, I tell my patients try to avoid fried foods, um, ultra processed foods that probably have a lot of chemicals in them as well, um, and increase their intake of nuts and seeds as. Um, as we've heard many times today during during our session. Um, so those are the foods that I try to steer them away from and the ones that I try to steer them towards. And of course, um, if one eats fish, there are uh, multiple studies to show that increased fish intake um, is associated with decreased, um, decreased dry eye and myobomian gland dysfunction. So uh, if one does eat fish, then fish two to three times per week uh, is typically what's recommended. Great, thank you. Uh, Dr. Tolfson, and, uh, and this may be outside of your, you know, exact expertise, but um, regarding, you know, women's health, um, I, obviously this is for both men and women, but decreasing the risk of Alzheimer's, dementia, and improving brain and mental health is a priority for many women um, as they age. What what do you recommend that they do to avoid that? Yeah, so brain health, that's an area that is um, that's so important. So I went through early menopause and going through early menopause and not using hormone replacement therapy as I would not be a candidate um, for because of having a hormone receptor positive cancer um, that puts me in an increased risk for dementia. Also, I have one copy of the APOE4 gene, which increases my risk of dementia. So I do everything that I can to optimize my brain health. And I love talking about brain health. Um, the, as far as nutrition, what we've already been discussing is, um, is really important. So all of the, all of the nutrition, you know, all of those recommendations, eating a lot of your leafy greens, right. Um, your, your blueberries, your nuts, all of those, um, phytonutrient rich, um, foods and then exercise. The brain loves exercise. So we know that exercise decreases, um, inflammation, lowers the risk of dementia, we may even see some cognitive improvements for women with mild cognitive impairment. And so during menopause, um, we often see an increase in obesity. We often see an increase in insulin resistance, leptin resistance, pro-inflammatory cytokines, and a decrease in our anti-inflammatory markers. All of those things can decrease cognitive function. On the other hand, we know that when women are physically active, when they're getting in their aerobic activity, that it increases insulin sensitivity. It increases anti-inflammatory markers and decreases those pro-inflammatory cytokines. Um, we know that brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which John Rady calls like miracle growth for the brain, BDNF is released. And so we have an increase in neural volume, activity, brain connectivity, um, genesis of new neurons, um, neuroplasticity, all of those good things. So movement is so, so important. In fact, there are studies done looking at midlife cardiovascular fitness and then um, looking at high compared to medium fitness. And then we can see like an 88% difference in dementia risk when they did a 44 year follow-up. Um, sleep is huge as well. And so the importance of um, the importance of getting adequate sleep, at least seven hours a night um, and all of the different sleep hygiene, cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia um, sleep hygiene tips are so important, such as those that Dr. Bannock mentioned, um, Dr. Beth Brady's a colleague of mine uh, mentions keeping your bedroom like a cave, keeping it, it cool, a little cool, keeping it really dark, um, really quiet, trying to wake up around the same time every day and going to bed around the same time every day. Um, for women, often getting up at night to use the restroom becomes more and more common. So trying to use the restroom before bed to limit those trips. Um, of course, to avoid that, those the screens and the blue wavelength light, like Dr. Bannock mentioned, um, all of those become become so important. And then also the power of connection. Um, we have uh, Surgeon General uh, Dr. Vivek Murthy, who has that that great book um, called Together, I believe it is, but talks about the power of connection. And so. Also, we know there's an epidemic of loneliness, especially among older women, um, 60, 65 plus. Um, we see more and more women who are living alone, who aren't connected. And so it's not about having a million likes on Facebook, but at least having a few friends that you can really reach out to and connect with when things get rough. And so we really need to prioritize our connections and not just see them as something extra or frivolous that we do when we have spare time, but to really see those as something that's important to our to our brain health as well. Dr. Tolson. How, how does the way that you you talk about like mental health and loneliness and how how does the way that we think and feel affect our health? 
Can our minds make us more likely to get sick or change how quickly we recover from illness? And is there any proof to that? Um, that's a good, that's a good question. So I think our thoughts definitely impact behaviors. Um, I was one of the first couple of Dr. Beth Brady and I were two of the first physicians ever trained as wellness coaches. And so, um, you know, you look at all of the science around, around behavior change and our thoughts are very powerful. So what we, um, you know, what we think all of the different, um, hormonal changes, all the chemical messengers, um, you know, the relationship between um, our thoughts and stress, and then the inflammatory cascade that we see with that. So I would say our thoughts definitely play a role um, in healing. If we have more inflammation, um, you know, we can, we can have more pain, we can have problems with, with healing. Um, so I would say that there's definitely a connection there, even though that's not my area of, of expertise, there's definitely a connection. And also it impacts our, our healthy lifestyle behaviors, how likely we are, um, based on our, our thoughts, how likely we are to choose those healthier foods, to be more physically active, to reach out and to, to be socially connected, to get enough sleep. If we're really anxious, it's harder to sleep. If we can't get enough sleep, it's harder to be relaxed. Stress and sleep are so incredibly intertwined. And, um, so, uh, give me one second here. So, uh, how, how do you guys find, you know, both of you, this is, um, you guys have more of a holistic approach. How do you find that your patients are receptive to your, your protocols? Uh, Dr. Bannock, you can go first. Uh, are, are you muted? You're, uh, you're muted. You can't seem to unmute yourself. Um, how about now? Yes, that works. Thank you. So um, I think my colleagues view me as kind of a unicorn. Um, you know, they kind of look at me a little bit oddly and say, okay, why are you, why are you doing this? You know, don't you want to be in the operating room? Don't you want to be doing cataract surgeries and lasers? And isn't it so rewarding to treat eye disease that way? And I tell them it is, but also when you think about the health of a person to allow them to lead a full life. Uh, and be, to be able to do all of their activities, especially activities in which they rely on their vision for reading, driving, working, seeing the faces of their loved ones. Like, wouldn't it be better for us to try to promote that type of function rather than to just treat it after it's already happened? And they kind of agree. They look at me like, yeah, yeah, I guess so. But um, I, I really think that it hasn't quite caught on yet. But what I do think will happen is that as people become more health conscious, they will be asking their providers for this um, guidance. And so I think providers will have to provide it. And I know a lot of my colleagues sometimes will say, oh, I had a patient come in today and ask me, what should I be eating for my eyes? What should I be eating for my glaucoma? Or what can I do for my dry eye? What can I do for my cataract? And I refer them to you. So <laughs> I think they're realizing that, um, that uh, they need to be versed in this as well, but it's a process. It's definitely a process, especially amongst a, a group of um, physicians who are mainly surgically based. Uh, and Dr. Tellison, what what's your experience? Yeah, so I mostly see people now um, through consulting, and then also I do um, I do group uh, group sessions with the nonprofit organization called Paving the Path to Wellness, which was created by my um, dear colleague and friend who I mentioned earlier, Dr. Beth Brady's uh, from Harvard, as well as Dr. Amy Commander, who's a breast oncologist. Um, and so with that, with that pr um, program, we do like 12, typically 12 group visits. And we talk about everything from physical activity to nutrition and um, stress management and sleep and social connection. But we also talk about the power of purpose and attitude and how do we use variety and investigation and goal settings in order to, to live our best life. So, um, so I enjoy working with women who are trying to optimize their health and well-being, whether they're a breast cancer survivor, whether they're going through that menopause transition. Um, and then, uh, a lot of women who are trying to increase their their health span and lifespan who want to live into their 80s, 90s to learn lessons from the blue zones and um, to really do what they can to thrive too. Great, thank you. And we have about two minutes left, so I'll give you I'll give uh, HV doctors uh, a minute. Um, Dr. Bannock, you can go first. Just to uh, anything you want to leave the audience with as far as how they can best take care of their eyes or whatever thoughts you have to leave the audience with. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, I always say our vision is so precious. Most people think of it as our most important sense, yet we take it for granted. 
we just wake up assuming that we'll be able to see well. But when our vision is not good, it can really debilitate us. So we need to be proactive. And the best ways you can do that are through nutrition and lifestyle. So include those macular carotenoids in your diet, include a diversity of plants in your diet, um, have healthy ha habits, uh, get some exercise in on a regular basis, try to reduce your stress levels, uh, sleep well, take a supplement to fill in any gaps in your diet. Those are the recommendations I would have. And also see your eye doctor once a year. Many people don't realize that adults need to be to meet, need to have an annual eye checkup. So after the age of 40, an annual eye checkup is, is really uh, beneficial. Great. And, um, and uh, uh, go ahead, uh, Dr. Thompson, final thoughts? Sure. Yeah. So just, um, I just, I think the excitement and the joy that comes from, um, that comes from self-care, it's not just about, not just about living a longer life, but about really thriving too. And I think that's what healthy lifestyle behaviors can really help us to do. Also, your community is welcome to join the Paving the Path to Wellness. Um, it's a nonprofit organization. And I believe we have Dr. Teresa Stone joining us on next Thursday for a plant-based cooking, um, cooking class. It's, it's free to anyone who wants to join. So, um, so we have that community as well that advances lifestyle medicine and anyone who wants to, to be a part of it's welcome to, to check us out. Great. And Dr. Dr. Thompson, for people who want to, uh, learn more about you and follow your work or get in touch with you, how, how could they do so? Yeah. Um, oh dear. I think my website's drtollison.net. <laughs> Isn't that, I should we have, we actually have, we have it up for you. Thank you so much. You, you, yes. you don't have to remember. You can just read it. Yes. Thank you. But but all but the paving the path to wellness. We have a couple of books that I co-authored with um, Dr. Beth Brady's and Dr. Amy Commander. All the proceeds go to the nonprofit organization. I would say instead of you can check out my own page, but even better than that, check out the paving the path to wellness. That nonprofit organization. Um, we're really trying to to spread the lifestyle medicine, evidence based, practical tips. We're really trying to share it with the world. Um, you know, the world needs more of that, and so that's where I would encourage you. Yeah, you can check out my own page. But check out this um, and you can go to that like pavers place and those we have those gatherings twice a month we have a pavers place and we have a paving class for connection we had tom brady chef on recently who is plant forward and talked about all of his cool things um so we do a lot of you know cutting edge research evidence-based guidelines um, but really making it practical too so um and once again free gatherings at least a couple times every month and you guys are anybody's welcome to join great and dr Bannock, how about you um, the best place to connect with me and find out about what I'm up to is my website, uh, www.drronniebannock.com. And um, I have a couple of books that I've published. One is called Beyond Carrots, Best Foods for Eye Health A to Z. So if you're interested in learning more about ocular nutrition, um, you can uh, take a look at that. And I also have something called the Nutrition IQ Test. So it's an online tool. It's free. You can take the test. It takes about five minutes. And once you answer the questions, um, it will give you a personalized recommendations on what types of foods to include in your diet. And it couples with the book. So the quiz and the book kind of go hand in hand. I also have a companion cookbook to Beyond Carrots, um, Dr. Ronnie's Visionary Kitchen. I do run, um, in addition to my practice, I do run online courses. Uh, so I can uh, help people, guide people in how to take care of their eyes and and learn the details about what they need to do for con uh, conditions like dry eye or macular degeneration, et cetera. So um, you can find all that information on my website. Great, Dr. Dr. Bannock and Dr. Tolson, thank you so much for joining us this evening and the information that you shared. If we can unmute the audience so they can share their appreciation. Thank you.